Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will test out two refurbished Creality printers. Generally, buying refurbished machines can save you around 30% or more. Previously, I bought three refurbished printers from Comgro to test out other products, including a cr 10 Pro V2 for around $360 and converting it to an OMG Direct Extruder. The printer was fully functional with just some cosmetic defects like scratches on the print bed and the paint on the aluminum extrusions and the shipping boxes were also pretty old and damaged. Compared to the new one, which was being sold at $599, saving more than 40% was still a pretty good deal. After that, I also bought two Ender 3s for $220 and made two conveyor belt printer conversion videos with them, and surprisingly, they were literally brand new. Today, we're going to take a look at these two refurbished printers, an Ender 3 V2 and an Ender 5 Plus. The retail price of the Ender 5 Plus is $520, and the one for the Ender 3 V2 is $224. If you get brand new ones, you have to pay $744. The total cost of these two refurbished printers is around $547. You would save around $200, or 26%. This means that if they are both in good working condition, the Ender 3 V2 would be free. I would like to thank Comgro for sending me them to review, and with that, let's get started. I will start with the Ender 5 Plus. The printer still has all of the foam, and everything is well protected. We have the base, the heated bed and glass bed, two sets of Z-axis frames, the top frame, four 20 by 40 extrusions to support the frame, sample filament, the spool holder, and some tools. Let's take a look at the parts and see what kind of cosmetic defects we can find. First, some of the extrusions have scratch marks and it looks like this is the one used to mount the spool holder. The x-axis extrusion also has some scratches. The base has more, and the z-axis looks fine with just some very light scratches at the bottom. The print head's fan cover is not in good shape, and I'm not sure how this happened, but it should still function. The end of the Bowden tube is burned a bit, and it seems they flip the burned end that touches the hot end and now use it to connect to the extruder. The glass bed is in good condition, with no obvious marks on it. All of the screws are in their designated bags, and they all look fine. First, let's secure the four 20 by 40 extrusions to the base. Then, place the top gantry on top of these four extrusions and secure it. Now, flip the machine so we can install both of the Z-axis frames. Once that is done, flip the machine back, place the heated bed inside the frames, and secure it. After that, we can connect all of the cables. Next, secure the glass bed to the heated bed with four binder clips, and finally, plug in the power cord and turn on the machine. Go to Settings, Move, and click Home to home the printer and ensure that everything is working. Go back and go to Leveling to do auto bed leveling. and then adjust the Z offset using the up and down arrows on the screen. Lastly, preheat the printer and feed in some filament until you see it coming out of the nozzle. It seems the X, Y, and Z axes are working and the extruder and the nozzle are not clogged, so this printer should be ready to print. Next, I will put together the Ender 3 V2 and we will do some test prints with it and the Ender 5 Plus. We have the base, the two 20 by 40 extrusions to form the gantry, and the two 20 by 20 extrusions to form the top of the gantry and the X axis, the print head, the X stepper motor, the Z stepper motor, the screen, the filament holder, and some sample filament and tools. This refurbished machine looks pretty much brand new. The print bed and the extrusions still have their protective plastic, and the nozzle is also in good condition. Put together the gantry first using these three extrusions. Put together the x-axis, slide it on the gantry, and then secure it all to the base. Now, install the z-stepper motor, twist in the lead screw, and tighten these screws at the bottom. Next, install the z-limit switch. Connect all of the cables, push in the Bowden tube and secure it, install the screen, remove the protective plastic from the bed, install the filament holder, and finally turn on the machine. Home the printer to make sure that everything is functioning. 
manually level the four corners, feed in some filament, and we can now begin our first test print on both printers, an XYZ calibration cube. The Ender 3 V2 started printing first, as a smaller print bed heats up faster, while the Ender 5 Plus took around 7 minutes longer to heat up and do 16 point bed leveling. While the Ender 3 V2 was printing, the corners of the cube began warping a little, and the skirt also did not stick very well. I may need to set the Z offset to be a little lower, but the rest of the cube still looks good. Now, the Ender 5 Plus does not have silent stepper drivers, so it is rather noisy when printing. The cubes both turned out okay, but while I was expecting the Ender 5 Plus to print slightly better than the Ender 3, I would actually say that the opposite happened with these cubes. However, the sample filament that the Ender 5 was printing with had already been open for an undetermined period of time, so the moisture may have affected the print. Up next, let's print a 3D Benchy using both printers. The Ender 5 Plus already started stringing at this point, and though the Ender 3 V2 did not, there are some imperfections with the surface of the layers here, which probably has to do with the retraction settings. Here is the result. There is quite a bit of stringing on both prints, more so on the Ender 5 Plus. As you can see, the Ender 3 V2 has some stringing nearing the top of this doorway, but the Ender 5 Plus has stringing throughout the entire doorway. These two benchies are not the best, but surprisingly, the Ender 3 V2 still printed better. Finally, I will use the same type of normal quality filament to print these headphone holders. For the Ender 5, the first attempt was unsuccessful. The Z offset of the first layer is not consistent, so one side lifted out completely. I just stopped the print and updated it to the latest firmware and then tried printing it again. This time, there weren't issues from beginning to end on the Ender 5 as well as the Ender 3. In the end, both printers delivered great results. The layers printed by the Ender 5 do look slightly better than those by the Ender 3, which is expected, but overall, there really isn't a big difference between both prints. I also printed this model using my Prusa printer, so let's compare the results. At the top is the Prusa, the middle is the Ender 5 Plus, and the bottom is the Ender 3 V2. The layers printed by the Ender 5 Plus are slightly better, but overall, I think the one printed by the Ender 3 V2 is actually the best. As a whole, I would still say that all three prints were fantastic. Okay, after doing a few test prints, I would say both printers are in working condition. On the Ender 5 Plus, we have some minor scratches on the print bed, some signs of assembling and disassembling the extrusions and screws, and the print head cover doesn't look great for unknown reasons. Anyways, when I put it together, all the threads and screws were fine. It does string a lot with the already opened sample filament. I have no idea how long it had been opened, but the sample filament may have absorbed moisture, and it's definitely not in good condition. As a matter of fact, the longer Bowden tube design on the Ender 5 Plus does require a greater retraction distance to avoid stringing. However, when I used some normal quality filament to do the final print, the Ender 5 Plus printed just fine like it's supposed to. So, I would consider the Ender 5 Plus to be a typical example of a refurbished machine. It's similar to my refurbished CR Tennis Pro V2. It's fully functional, but does have quite a few cosmetic defects. As for the Ender 3 V2, it's just like the two refurbished Ender 3 printers I bought for my conveyor belt conversion project. It's completely brand new, except for the shipping box. The person who returned this may not have even started to put the printer together, so everything, including the print bed, color screen, and aluminum extrusions still have their protective films, and all screws are in unopened bags. However, the user manual, microSD card, and the USB card reader were all missing. 
For me or other users with some experience with 3D printers, you may not need to use the manual to put an Ender 3 v 2 together. And for the micro SD card, I have many spares so it also isn't that big of a deal to me, but these may be problems for beginners. To be fair, beginners would be more likely to buy a brand new machine from Amazon, which is why these refurbished 3D printers exist. For this Ender 3 v 2 the printer itself is not only in good working condition, but it's also a brand new machine other than the missing user manual and micro SD card, and I am very happy with it. So, depending on your skill level, getting a refurbished 3D printer could be a great deal. If you want to save even more, you can also take a look at some used machines from Comgrow. They are super cheap, and a used Ender 3 can be priced as low as $79 with free shipping. But these machines have been returned from customers and are untested, so you might need to do some repairing on your own and expect to see something like a clogged hot end, damaged screws or threads, missing parts, or anything else that you can or can't imagine. Overall, I hope you found this video useful, and I left a link to Comgrow's refurbished Creality machines, as well as those super cheap $79 used but untested machines. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.